Hello, and welcome back to the 60th ever episode of the Iced Coffee Hour podcast. I am Kelly Stamps, and so far, this podcast has made $71,129.52. That was actually really good. Wow. <laughs> Can I just say, I think that was the best introduction we've ever had on the podcast. That was actually really good. I was impressed. You had a little Thank time you. to practice, though. Yeah. I think incredible. when I just get a mic, I feel unstoppable. First, I was all nervous but once I started. I just, it's I'm a natural born performer. It's easy. Well, thank you so much for coming all the way to Las Vegas from yes. where what? F- Flor- Florida, Florida, up in the Everglades. I think you're our farthest guest ever to travel. Yeah. Is that is that true, Graham? Is it? I think it is. Florida. Yeah. We had no one else come from another country. I guess not. No. no. Florida is another well, country. <laughs> it may as well be. It may as well be. It's it's wild out there. But this is exciting to have you on because this started when you posted a video about how you spend, what was it? you breaking down your income sources, how you make $40,000 a month. And I took that as an opportunity to monetize it for myself. Yes. <laughs> so I did a reaction video to you making and spending $40,000 a month. And then I started getting into your content. Mm-hmm. And you're doing some really great videos about minimalism that uh, it's just, it's, it's very relatable. It's very approachable. It, it's nothing like too fancy. It's just, but it's really simple content that people really like. How did you get started doing that? And what was your reaction, by the way, when you saw my video? <laughs> and in my video, by the way, I was like, Jack, we got to bring her down. We got to meet her. And then here you are. Yes. Well, I, well, first, thank you for having me here. Yes. <laughs> My clone. Wait, Jack, why are you wearing that wig? I just noticed that. I think when people what like wig? grow old of each other, they start to look like each other. Yeah. Like how people say about their dogs. Got it. Yeah, I could see that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> but I, um, I guess I started my channel just as a way to make myself laugh, uh, make my delusions come to life, essentially. Uh, I first started off on Instagram just doing little skits with you know, different wigs in my household. I did little skits like Black Thanksgiving and uh, what it's like living alone and just funny things. And my friend said, start a YouTube channel. So I did and here we are, I guess. There's no agenda behind it, honestly. I just upload videos to make myself laugh. Were you, were you, what were you doing when you first started making these little skits? Were you, did you have a job? Was, was this like during school or like how old were you when you started? It was 2018. Uh, Well, I always had a YouTube channel, actually. Let's go way back. I used to post hotel reviews when I was a teenager. What? On YouTube? Because I traveled a lot for gymnastics. Are they still up? No, I would do anything to find those videos. We would travel a lot for gymnastics, like my mom and I and my dad. So we would go to really middle of nowhere places like Virginia Beach up in the woods or somewhere. And (laughs) we would stay at like Days Inn, Quality Inn. But for me, it was an experience. Like, I got to review this. Like, I am... Anthony Bourdain, like parts that are known. And I was just very into it. Um, Got a lot of mean comments. People were like, come get their child. Who is this? (laughs) What is this person doing? I did a back handspring tutorial. I was a kid. It was a little messy. Wait, so how old were you when you were doing Like 12. 12 years old. Yeah. Doing hotel. So I was already a vlogger. Yeah. But I didn't actually start doing my channel until it was 2018. My first ever official video for my channel was what to expect at boot camp Mm -hmm. because there's not a lot of videos out there. There's not a lot of military related content creators besides one person named Kyle Gott at the time. Mm-hmm. So I thought, why not show you know a girl going into this really boyish job of avionics? So I did a video of what to pack, what not to pack. Um, and <laughs> you don't have your cell phone for, I believe, two and a half months. So it was fun for me to share with the world, oh, this is what you're going to experience if you actually sign up for the military. And from there, people thought it was funny. They weren't as interested in the military advice. They were just like, mm. this girl's hilarious. We like your take and my reenactment of my uh, base commander. Yeah. He would always yell at me. Apparently, I have a smirk on my face. <laughs> That's the smirk. It's just me resting. He's like, Staples. Airman Staples. Airman Staples. I'm like, sir, Airman Stamps reports it's stamps. We never saw him again. Rumor wow. is he quit because of me. Did you always have the intention to, to join the military or was this more of like a decision you wanted to experience this? I wanted to go in as an officer after college, but after taking like a year and a half, well actually two years at Santa Monica College in Santa Monica where I'm from, I realized I just want to make money right away. So in addition to YouTube, I said, well, I just feel like I kind of have that thing that makes money. (laughs) Yeah. So I just went and got a retail job like everybody else does in Santa Monica. Uh, just start working on the channel, lived at home at the time. So I was able to actually pull in 
all the creative juice I needed. Because I think if I started now living alone, it would be harder because yeah. I was able to take more risks living at home. And that's how I got there, I guess. I just, all my funniest videos were made in my house. My mom was always downstairs. I'm like, shh. She'd make one sound. I'm like, I'm yeah. trying to make content. So those are my most popular videos. It was, today. yeah. So, so get this. So when I first started, I was making videos at the Oppenheim Group late at night. And I'd purposely mm -hmm. wait for Jason and Brett to leave and make sure they were gone. Because here's the thing. Sometimes they would go to the gym and I'd be like, okay, they're gone. Like, I'm, I'm going to at least have an hour. They'll come back like five minutes later. And then they'll just be down in the computer that's like working. And I'll wait there. I'll wait there. It'll be like 10 o'clock. And I'm still mm -hmm. like waiting. 10.30, still waiting. He'll leave. Be like, okay, now I got, now I got a chance to film. There yeah. was one point, it was, and we had this thing where if the door opened, uh, there was like a beep, 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 like that, like a little yep. alarm thing that would it go off. Up. Yeah. And so I was filming upstairs. It was so embarrassing. This is before I told anybody I was making videos at all. And I had the camera set up with a light and it was like 10 PM at night and uh, I'm filming. I'm in the middle of like just talking about something and I hear the beep, 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 beep. And the door opens up and it's someone from the office like walking downstairs and I'm sitting here like with the mic on with the camera and like, I'm just pay like hoping they don't see me. And I don't know, like, is it weird that I don't say hi? It's Thankfully, like, I basically hit upstairs. They left and I could resume filming. But it was nerve wracking. Like if someone had walked in on me mm -hmm. filming. So I, I know that that just like anxiousness about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And my mom respected my privacy, but she was just like. Kelly, who is actually watching you do these K-pop tutorials? I said, my number one fan is in Uzbekistan. He respects me. Can you just respect me, Jersey? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm thankful that I had to work around other noises. And I had multiple roommates once I moved out of home. And here I am today. Got it. So you were making those videos. How much were you making back then? Was it? Three cents a day when okay. I was at home. So it was a very, I would say, steady build between... 2018 up until 2020, I was first making nothing. Um, then it was three cents, four cents, 12 cents was a big day for me. I said, all right, I'm gonna go to the nail shop this month. <laughs> and then uh, 2020, it was January 10th exactly. My story time video, which was totally impromptu about going on a Bumble date. I actually, my mom had no idea about this video until her coworkers said, are you aware that your daughter is like famous now or something, but it was a video about me meeting someone on Bumble and he showed up, kind of bait and switched me. That video- How did he bait and wait, switch you? Wait, you gotta tell this story. Yeah. yeah, oh, you haven't seen it. No. You need to watch. Okay, well, this one, it's controversial, which is good. It kind of struck people. So I think YouTube said, all right, this is making people mad. It's making us money, let's make our money. So it just worked out. Okay. Um, I start off in my car filming on my like potato iPhone. I'm like, hello everybody, I'm angry. I just drove to Italy. I drove to my home basically. Yeah. Met a guy off Bumble. Century City? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You already know the one, Century City. Yeah. This guy met me. So I like typically older guys. It's okay. I can work with it. I typically <laughs> like older people just because like with my experience, like yeah. I mentioned, I kind of have always been working. I just relate to people who are kind of yeah. know what they're doing. Jack is very mature for his yeah, age. Yeah, he like, is. Listen, oh, I, I never you. notice any sort of different, like like I treat Jack like in, I would in like a- ages, a, you don't a, notice a difference? No, like maybe I treat you like like I would like a 50 year old, right? Yeah. Didn't he say so? <laughs> I would, I would not say you so. Say so. <laughs> I mean, Alex, what do, you, what do you think? Does he treat me like a 50-year-old? Macy? I mean, I hear you I laughing think, over I there. think he just treats you like anybody else. I, yeah, the biggest the biggest thing for me would be the uh, the lack of awareness for laundry. and For, for laundry? Ironing, for ironing clothes. Oh, right. Those two things for yeah. me. Well, so anyway. Yeah, I like men who older, yeah. do their laundry, whatever. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And everything was all great. And at the end of the day, he goes, oh, by the way, um, do you like kids? And I said, well, you know, I like steak, but I don't eat it all the time. You know, I like kids. I don't particularly want to be around them. I don't, what are you asking this for? He goes, well, truth is I have a little bugger. <laughs> I'm like, mm, what's that? I'm like is an injury? He said, no, I, I have a son and I really care about him. And I go, oh, okay, okay. He's like, you look mad. I'm like, no. Oh. And it became not just one bugger. He said, well, actually you have multiple kids and I'm just sick of meeting LA women who are judgmental and don't want anyone to deal with kids. And I'm just like, on my profile, it actually says no kids. He goes, I know, but like, I just was thinking that you'd be the one. You'd it be said the that on your profile. Yeah, it said time. no kids. So wait, 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 wait. With. So, so two things, number how, how old was he? 28. 28. I think so. And to put no kids, is that a common thing? Cause I no. feel like, no, no kid, like it's, 
Like, well, to there's say a lot no of kids. Sh- yeah. That means you don't want it. So well, there's on at the time, Bumble had an option where you could say your plans for family. Don't want, want, want and have more or mm-hmm. have and don't want more. Mine said don't want. But I mean, but obviously I like, I'm yelling that. I'm going to say yeah. that in sure. I might pop out a bunch of little stamps. But that just means I don't want to deal with his being how young I was. I was 23 and I made that video. No, 22. Right. But either way, he I felt right. that he didn't lie because he didn't say he had kids or didn't have kids. He just sprung it on me at the end. Mm-hmm. And it felt kind of like misled. And sure. he basically got really upset at me. But that's the video. I told it in a really funny way. How did you get upset? Oh, he just said, oh, you're just judgmental like the rest of women. Wait, but you, so you retorted and you said, oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, I didn't say anything. I just said, okay. He's like, your voice is going up. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's not. I don't know what you're saying. He's like, you look happy. I said, okay. Well, to be honest, I said, if I had an option between meeting a man who has children already or doesn't, just for the sake of me not having to like worry about having to play stepmother. At this time in my life, being a literal child who just learned how to make my own doctor's appointment, I would obviously prefer one who doesn't. But like I would now date someone if they did have them because I have more experience. But still, like I mean, I think any person generally would agree with that. And actually, these YouTubers made a response to it. His name is Abba and Preach. They're really well known. It's really funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, that video blew up because it was controversial. And so many people were like on this side and this side. And people were making assumptions in the comment section. Like, so what's going to happen when you have children? Like, well, I would meet someone who also has children. And all or that. you would stay with the yeah, person or just, that you had yeah. children. With. Like not everyone just disappears. I'm like, yeah, I, I have a good effect on me. The stamp <laughs> stays with them. I don't know. I have a pretty good track record. But it was just a funny video. And it was so random and out of the blue. And it was filmed on an iPhone 5. That's the funniest part. Yeah. I have so many other nicely made videos about like New York and my experience. But that one randomly went off three months later in January then it kind of worked as a trickle down effect. So then I went to the, uh, the end page where you can add in the next video link. So then I added a New York City uh, interview video where I interviewed men with my spatula and people said, wow, this chick's funny. So then it just went down that route. Why didn't you go down the route of more dating stories? But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Skillshare. I absolutely love learning new skills in my personal time, whether it's improving my photography, learning new editing techniques, or even trying something completely new like graphic design. I actually personally remember using Skillshare to learn graphic design from the start when I first launched my business. I truly believe all humans were born to create in one way or another, whether you last picked up a paintbrush yesterday or in grade school. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. They offer so much to explore, projects to create, and support from fellow creatives. One class I look forward to taking is YouTube Success Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. It's a class taught by Marquez Brownlee, one of my all-time favorite YouTube creators. And Skillshare is for everyone. Whether you want to be a dabbler, a pro, a hobbyist, or a master, you are creative. Explore your creativity today and get a one-month trial of premium membership for free. To get started, go Go to Skillshare.com slash iced coffee. That's Skillshare.com slash iced coffee. Thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring the video and back to the podcast. Because I got to say. They're funny. D- dating. Everyone loves that. This is this has been the highlight of the of the vlog is just Jack and dating. You combine the two and it's we, we the retention rate you literally see retention goes up as soon as it's like anything Jack and dating retention all the way through the roof. Yeah. And then as soon as you switch topics, and bloop, well, why, I can not, tell you why not double down on that and be like, OK, this is this is my this is my infinite monetization loop. I'm going to go on Bumble even more, go on more dates and just get uh-huh. like just share stories. If I did go down that route, that would be really great, actually. However. I find that whenever, this is an unpopular opinion, whenever people have these dating channels, most of them are single for a reason, I find. When they give out advice like, just see you now, don't ever text a guy back at 5.01 p.m., you have to wait. I just don't want to go down that route of preaching to people what they should and should not be doing because no, I think everyone be, is different. But it would be story times. It would, oh, story times. Yeah. Okay, you would story just, times. You would just 
I don't want to look like a times. crazy chick who just talks about men on the internet. I okay. have three videos There's, that are doing that is, so well, though. Yeah, that's okay, true. That's I feel fair. like once you start going down that rabbit hole, Drama that's channels. all that yeah. people see you as. Yeah. And, and then also, yeah. once you did end up getting a boyfriend, then it would kind of like, I mean, how, where's your channel I would go? belong to the streets. I'd be walking down yeah. and people would be like, oh, yeah, I saw that video. You're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> there you your ex, man. Your ex. Oh, that was good, man. It was good. <laughs> and I just, guy? yeah. Who is? Is he good enough for you? Yeah. Is this guy you're talking about? And whenever I show like a mystery arm, yeah. like I have like friends and I was walking around with my friend, it was just like, his arm and people were making all these assumptions about him because of my past videos. Some guys said, he's not going to treat you well. It was just my guy friend's forearm. I said, from the forearm, yeah. you can tell they go, yeah, he, he's not going to take care yeah, of you. I can like, tell he's, I he's got three kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's going to be a problem for yeah. you. You should date, you should date me. And they're like in Kansas or something. Okay. But not a bad idea at all. If anything, it would be fun to sprinkle those in. But I just don't want to be known as the person because, you know, there's also bad stories about women. I have to keep it fair to some degree. I don't want to paint all men as bad, even though Florida, they are rough. <laughs> Why? What's what's wrong with what's wrong with Florida, man? <laughs> when you mix the heat in Florida with, you know, women, because we can't really wear too many layers there. It's really hot. In addition to there being many different cultures in Florida, just blended into one. You get different types of customs. For example, I was in Publix, which is the one market we have, and I was just walking down the aisle, and some man said, chocolate. I said, excuse me? He said, chocolate. He said that to you? I said, what are you? He goes, chocolate, your skin so smooth. I said, oh, you're, you're complimenting me. He goes, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. And he just stared at me, like. <laughs> so in his, wherever what, he comes where from. Where was he from? Oh, I spoke to him. He's from Israel. Okay. So I live yeah. in a very, like, yeah, I don't know. The community is interesting. It's half sure. Jewish, half Cuban. Then there's me. So I literally stand out like chocolate. So yeah. when they see me, they just don't know how to act. But, you know, if they come out here, people are like, hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Boston experience. They just don't say anything. They're like. They saw Jack. They'd be like vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend and I together, they said yeah. caramel and chocolate. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> like, it happens. They said that? Yeah. People call you out by your appearance. Like they say legs to me because my legs <laughs> are 99% of my body. Do you know the Peter Griffin meme where his legs go all the way up? That's me if I stand up. Have you seen it? <laughs> I don't know if I have. You comment well, below if you know the meme. We'll, we'll put a picture up. up here. Peter yeah. Griffin, the legs yeah. go all the way up. Okay. So that's what it looks like when I wear a skirt. Got it. Okay. So anyway, so so Bumble stories start blowing up for you. Yes. Uh, is that when you started doing it full time? Not necessarily. Okay. So I didn't really plan the full time thing. I was already uploading two times a week since the beginning. It was more like the income past a certain amount that I could live off of. It was about April, actually. This is pretty recent of mm -hmm. 2020 when I said, you know what, mother, I'm tired of you yelling at me about the fork in the sink. That is your Fork, if you're watching, that is your fork. It's not my fork. She likes to leave dishes in the sink when I used to live with her. And she would just like leave anyway, petty stuff. So I said, you know what? I make exactly $5,200 after taxes. That's only this amount, but I'm going to move out. So I went to New York City, started making content the same way. I didn't change anything. Though. Mm -hmm. I just started vlogging more about New York, my experience there. It kind of changed from funny story times to let me show you the city and this is my experience living here not knowing what i'm doing you know what when you mentioned april of 2020 that's when the youtube algorithm i think really started recommending your content because i mm -hmm. think at the time when i first saw your channel it came up recommended to me i think you maybe had a hundred thousand subscribers ish yeah. and i remember i sent your channel the macy and i'm like macy check out this channel I don't know what you were doing, but the videos kept getting recommended mm -hmm. and uh, and it was just they, they were good videos. Uh, nothing like like R rated, like no mm -hmm. swearing or anything, nothing inappropriate. It was just really simple, good videos. Why do you think they took off the way they did? So I'm used to seeing myself every day and I'm used to just waking up and just existing. But according to the comment section. People keep saying it's so nice. You're such a breath of fresh air that you're just yourself on camera and that I apparently don't try to talk with an extra high pitched voice or seem extra excited. Like, hi, guys. Um, it, it's kind of like <laughs> Alex is cracking right. up over there because yeah, <laughs> that's that's grand. Yeah. yeah. Listen, for <laughs> me, you guys? Listen, it's with, great. Finance, it works for you. with finance, you got to make it exciting. So you got to yeah. take yourself plus at 50 percent. Yeah. Because already uh, you lose like 20 percent of yourself just yeah. being on camera. You're less exciting. So you have yeah. to 
And when you're Help providing yourself. such high value content like that, people naturally don't want to listen. They just want to hear, how do I become rich? Exactly. How do I become rich? I don't understand. They skip to the end. Yeah. So you can do the, hi guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, with my channel, I think it's just that I truly just depicted what I was really going through in each phase, because currently I'm in a phase where I said, okay, I'm, I want something new. I need to either launch a podcast or a second channel or have a business like you suggested. Uh, so I think it just took off because people said I'm like a friend in their head. That is what they keep saying. Mm. And I've met so many other YouTube people when I lived in New York City. All of them said they've never been approached as much as I do. I got approached five to six times a day living in Manhattan. And people feel so comfortable coming up to me because they feel like I am their friend. So I think it's just that I offer advice or at least talk. I say what other people are thinking, but they won't say it. Yeah. And I don't apologize for it. It is odd. Like I remember when I first started like watching your videos, the content is so easily digestible. Like you could just like watch. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You could just watch it and listen. You never get bored. Even if it's not the most exciting content, for some reason you're just drawn into watching it. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just works. I don't know what it is. My friend said it's my bush baby eyes because I don't blink. And I could tell you something right now. Like, did you know that 60% of penguins are actually going extinct right now in Santa Monica and there's a huge short, like... I believed you. Yeah. Until you mm. said Santa Monica. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's teasing. You know what I realized, Alex? That you're wearing two different kinds of socks? Yes, but you know what else? Oh, what? We could just sponsor ourselves in this video. How about that? You know what? That sounds great. I always like my own posts anyway. Me too. And for a limited time, if you want access to the YouTube Creator Academy, where I go over exactly what you need to do step by step to start a YouTube channel and turn it into a business, I will give you $200 off when you use the coupon code 200 off. The link is down below in the description. This is everything that I have learned about how to grow a YouTube channel, what makes a successful title and thumbnail, everything you need to do along the way. It's all down below in the description. And it's two hundred dollars off. Two hundred bucks off. Two hundred dollars off. You know what? I'm gonna take you up on that deal because I have the Sta family to run. Wow! There we go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the discount. And with that said, let's get back to the video. What made you want to make that income video? I actually didn't want to. You didn't want to. No, why? but I know why I did. The because algorithm? yes, but also, I wish I had someone like that on YouTube, to be honest, when I was starting to give me a ballpark of what I should be earning. So it wasn't really, I actually, I'm not gonna say I regret making the video. I just don't think it's anybody's business how much you make or what you vote or any of that stuff. However, I got nothing but thank you, Kelly. Thank you for telling me because Mm -hmm. I was lowballed so much in the beginning uh, when I had like 30,000 subscribers. I should have been getting like some brand deals by then, but people Mm -hmm. were just trying to send me like, wigs (laughs) wigs <laughs> for free and like hair extensions and stuff. So I made that video just to say, okay, people, this is what you can be earning just so you know, because every day I wake up I'm like what on earth? I can't believe I make a living just being myself on camera. I want other people to know that they can do this too and more. How do you get started with the minimalism aspect? Was that when you moved to New York, you didn't have furniture and you're like, I'm right, minimalist. No, oh, actually I, I think, oh, I, who would I watch? I watched some Marie Kondo videos. She's really well known for fashion, like organization. And there's a thing called the KonMari method where she cleans out. How do you know? Have you seen this before, Macy? Okay. Uh, women tend to watch her a lot. She's very popular. Uh, I lived at home mm-hmm. and my mom has a lot of clothes. Like we're very close, but she has, she's super into fashion. She has so much. And we moved after my parents got divorced and I saw how hard it was for her to move. I thought, wow, that can't be me ever. So I went to my closest crossroads trading post, Buffalo Exchange place, took all of my clothes, sold it. Realized most of those clothes I never even wore. And most of them weren't even worth the investment in the first place. It was such a pain trying to sell everything on Poshmark. But I made about $600 from a gigantic closet and realized, oh, why don't I just take that 600 and just buy a few statement pieces that will last me forever. So that's kind of how I've been since. When I moved to Boston though, I did... Go shopping because I started getting bigger YouTube paychecks. So I kind of got addicted to shoes, but then I sold them all again because I realized mm. it's not worth it. So yeah. hey, you told me that you have like six articles of clothing, right? Yeah, this is one of them. It's my favorite. It's like a t-shirt, but it's a dress and I can dress it up from day to night. <laughs> but how do you? Uh, oh, let me correct that. Six actual like outfit articles of clothing, like dresses. I have a dress, really oh, nice pair right. of jeans. I have thermals to go to bed in and mm. under layers, base layers. But in Florida, you really don't need that many clothes <laughs> because I wear like, the dresses I wear have to get dry cleaned. 
Mm-hmm. So they don't really like get dirty, like ca- uh, cashmere, stuff like that. It just doesn't get soiled easily. I don't know. And I really do have dresses that go from day to night. I just have shoes, shoes that change. Would you trust Jack with your laundry? No. Okay. Here's why. Well, why not? <laughs> I have silks. I have cashmere. I have linen blends. What do you do That's with easy. what do you do with silk lingerie? Uh, okay, so on the washer at my house, there is <laughs> there, so, so my mom. No, <laughs> I hand them to my mom. No, there's a setting that says delicates. So I'll spin it to delicates and I'll put all this stuff in and then I studied. Do you use regular detergent or a special type? I use the expensive one. Tide. Tide detergent. Is what I use. Sorry. And then, of course, you need to add the fab- fabric so- softener, the okay. fabric piece of paper. Yes. Uh, in the dryer. You're when the first, you... That's the first time I've ever heard someone say softener. <laughs> is that what it's called? Softener. Yeah. Fast. The, the, <laughs> Soft... tea, the tea is like a, like a quiet. Tea. Right. You Soft- add that softener. to the dryer and mm-hmm. then you take it out and you're done. Oh, and when you dry, put it on delicate setting. Wow. Did he practice? This is... I think he did. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't add it to the. I add it to the dryer. Dryer sheets in the dryer, not the washing machine. Okay, yeah. I will say that's yeah. actually not bad. Personally, I like to hand wash my clothing because it saves a lot of water, and I don't have that many outfits. So again, it'd mm. be a huge waste. But I still like to go down to my garage and wash because there's always some sort of animal in the garage. It's fun going <laughs> downstairs in Florida. But yeah, you're right. Uh, there is a certain wash I use, delicates, but I usually just hand wash everything and hang dry it because it takes care of the clothes better, and I don't have to buy new clothes. Mm. Delicates. Yes. You ever heard of that, Graham? <laughs> Delicates. Have you ever heard of that? I've, I've heard of it. <laughs> I've heard of it. That wasn't bad. Before. That wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was your reaction then to watching your my video. reaction to you? Did you know who Graham was before he reacted yeah. to you? I will admit, I don't watch your channel like Clockwork. Mm. I don't watch anyone's like Clockwork. I watch cat videos <laughs> and airplane stuff, okay. but I know very well who you are. I feel like you look the same in person, but you oh, good. like. Yeah, that would worry me. But what? Like, I feel like you haven't aged. You've had a channel for so long. You're like the I, Benjamin no, Button. No, 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 no. I'm getting wrinkles around here. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's just kind of funny because I'm like, oh, I'm sitting next to the person who I watch. Now I see how people feel when they meet me. But um, I know about your channel. I know about your main channel. Yeah. I didn't know about the Ice Coffee Hour podcast. And I thought it was really funny. Once I started watching it, I thought it was insightful, a way to share knowledge with people like me who don't know anything about investing or personal finance in general. But I knew you were going to make a response. People were telling me, Graham's going to respond to this if you make a video. So I was warning yeah. my Instagram followers. Yeah. I said, you guys keep asking me. They want. They feel more intimate with me. They don't feel like I'm being gaudy by saying, oh, I earned this amount of money. It's more like I've always been very transparent from 2018. I earned three cents today. I earned this. So when I made it, I saw your response. I said, oh, okay. I wasn't surprised. I said, this is going to respond. Yeah. I know that you were, were, you you nervous? were really quick. Like I was going to, no. cri- you weren't nervous. Everyone seems nervous. Like I, I'm about to like rail into well, them. You know what? Spending. Yeah. I didn't answer a lot of things because I didn't realize in the moment I should have, like you asked what happens with the rest of your money. Yeah. Um, also I didn't leave. <laughs> if I included my cost of flying, I would have been more nervous because I'm very protective over that. But again, it's something I invest a lot of money into because it's my hobby. Yeah. I wasn't nervous. I know that my car lease is expensive. And I feel kind of indifferent about it. Mm-hmm. I like the car. It gives me confidence. I was only worried about that, getting chewed apart. Is everyone chews me apart for my car? <laughs> but in Florida, you, ooh, I, when the I pull Audi up Sport, on people, right? I'm like- it's convertible. Yes. Yeah. It's so fancy. But also, I might trade it in and get like a little SUV or something. Prius, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, literally with Audi, you can trade it in and get yeah. a different car. But I can also do like a lease swap. Okay. But I wasn't nervous. I was just excited is I feel like everyone told me it's a milestone if you make it in the seat. I'm like, oh, wow. (laughs) They said, Kelly, we're so proud of you. Someone said, I feel like you're my daughter. (laughs) I'm so proud of you on Grants. I said, okay. Gosh, that's nuts. It's a milestone. Yeah. Wow. So where does the extra money go? I am very old school. I'm very much like my dad. He was very stubborn. It better not be cash. It's cash. No, actually, it's in no. It's a savings account that doesn't earn any interest with Wells Fargo. <laughs> Let me Worse know. than that. Worse. I think savings accounts are completely useless. So it's a checking account. It's, it's all, cash. It's all. No, no, no. It's actually not. It's, well. The it's, worst you could do is a Wells Fargo checking account. Oh, no. I have just typical. I don't want to tell people my bank just in case someone, some hacker finds a way in. But it's. Which one is it? 
Okay. I'm with them. Okay, yeah. I'm yeah, with yeah, them. It's a good fine. one. Okay, yeah. just is, I feel like they yeah. find they're a way the to back in. For a business account, yeah. they're really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I have a business account for, uh, well, I mean, they kind of bleed into each other, but I have a business account, which is just where my YouTube earnings go into, I guess, and then I have a personal account, which is just, it's still a <laughs> Oh, no, I just said it. There's <laughs> I meant, I love TD Bank. Um, it's just in my checking account, yeah, but sure. I, a long time ago, actually, like did dogecoin when it first came out didn't put in that much i wish i did because now it's not a joke anymore i'm like oh there's dogecoin millionaires how much did you put in dogecoin just 300 dollars. and what did it turn into i think it was like 1300 and you sold it 13 yeah what would that have been worth now oh i I feel like well it's hard to tell i would think probably at least something tells me maybe thirteen thousand. yeah how long ago did you buy this was 2017. We know oh. this is 2018. Okay, no, it'd be worth a lot. Yeah, don't remind it would be me. Uh, 18. That would have been. Uh, it would be worth at least like 45 grand. Yeah, that would have, because it was a fraction of a cent yeah. back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was like point zero zero two cents. Yeah, that was a lot so of money to me back crazy, then. Point like two cents or something like that. Yeah, and I I'm someone who's just you know I didn't get the finance talk from my parents, so even doing that was like whoa. This must be some pyramid scheme. I don't understand yeah. this 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 investing thing. But um, yeah, so I just keep it all in savings because I wanted to honestly just make a huge risky. A YOLO? A gamble? Yeah. No. Not all of it. But I just mean, for me, I'm like I'm talking like 20000 to $50,000. Just hire Why? someone I mean, that's to help a, That me. is a lot. Hire some yeah. YOLO. So I'm guess at this point, there's got to be six figures in that account just sitting there not doing anything. So yes. That's a big opportunity cost yeah. because the market has gone up in the last year. It's something mm-hmm. like 20, 30%. Yeah. So take whatever you have. 30% is basically how much you missed out on by not investing your money. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know. I didn't. Well, I knew. I just didn't know where to go to. And actually Robinhood app worked with me on a sponsorship. And that's when I found out about it. Like actually how to invest. I still don't know, to be honest, but they have a program called like learn Robinhood. You don't need any of that. Yeah. But I worked with them. So I just use the Robinhood app. I just have something in S and P what's it called? S&P Vanguard, Spy. whatever. Yeah, Vanguard. Sure. It's just that. I don't yeah. even look at it to be honest. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm waiting for. I think it's just a fear of <clears throat> losing the money. No, it's not going to happen like that. No. It's not. The worst, the worst is probably going to happen if you're in an S and P 500 is like mm-hmm. it goes down. The market goes down 50%. Mm-hmm. That's the worst that's going to happen, most likely in the next. Who knows how many years? At some point, it's going to go down. And if but that it's happens, going to recover. But you're going to keep buying in. It's not like you're just going to yeah. invest once and then right. never again. Yeah. And also, there are bigger problems than your portfolio if the S and P 500 yeah. goes yeah. down 50. percent Listen, as long as you're making YouTube, as long as you make money, whatever that investment is worth in the meantime, it doesn't make any difference. So if I were mm-hmm. you, I would take of that. It's a lot of money. I would imagine take 70 percent of it, even half. Half mm-hmm. just to get take half of it, put it all in the S and P five hundred. That's it. Not with Robinhood. Not with Robinhood. Not with Robinhood. Really? No. Get a re- get get a brokerage public that has get public where you could get a okay. free stock down below in the description. <laughs> Use code Graham and it's worth all the way up to seventy dollars. And very when you smooth. deposit hundred dollars in the platform, someone get a free stock of Tesla. I will. I'll so. do public then. But no, for, uh, for for honestly, for like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but actually do it. But I, but actually get the free stock in public. Now, my point being, uh, if I were to invest more than like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, I want a brokerage where I know I could call them up on the phone if I have any mm. issues. All of the other brokerages are great. Like I know people who have seven figures on Robinhood. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just for me, I'd rather have a phone number. Yeah. Um. I, so that's what I would do. Former Mister Kelly Stamps was a that was his job. And he was the one who's giving me advice. He's like, you should just put it all in. I'm like, I don't trust you, Stan. <laughs> but he was the one who was telling me that same advice. Wait, so when did he tell you to put it all in? Oh, this was like, not all in yeah. all of it, but he was saying if I you know, go off and become a commercial pilot and just use my YouTube money as investing money, this was like four months ago. So you would, well, okay. Four months ago so is not so months, bad, actually. You yeah. would be, so yeah, so four months ago, you would be up to day like 10, 12%. Just still, I mean, that stinks. Mm-hmm. That's a 10% just for five minutes of work. Yeah. I would do that now. Because what what else is going to happen is that if you don't do it now, it's easy to put it off and put it off. And it gets scarier because the more the mm-hmm. market goes up, the more it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, I, 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 now it's even higher. So I would just recommend take half. Take half. Okay. Put it in the market. Let it be. Don't ever look at it again. 
and and psychologically too, just treat it like that money's gone. Yeah. And then now what's in your savings account is, is still going to be a lot of money and then just continue adding on to that. Mm-hmm. But and then start investing on a consistent base. Take like five, 10 grand a month. Just keep buying the same thing and then keep the rest of the money in your savings. Mm-hmm. I kind of see my YouTube income as I mean, it's real, obviously, but it just doesn't seem real to me. <laughs> like, How do I earn that much? <laughs> so I just want to play around with it because I'm, I just like I, I'm, I'm not in all of it. Yeah. I'm not going to be like the yeah. gamblers at the golden nugget. <laughs> like, put it all in, Marty. But uh yeah, so I'm I'm willing to yeah. finally start investing now that I have a grasp of, oh, it's not, you know, I'm not going to be crying in the street like I lost everything. Right. Yeah, here's the thing with YouTube is I've seen how sporadic it could be. Yeah. And I've seen just how quickly it could go from like great and you get one video that gets shadow banned. 10 for, out of 10. For, for like no reason at all. And then the entire channel drops like 20, 30 percent. And you realize yeah. like, ah, oh, geez, with YouTube, it could be like the highest of highs, the lowest of lows. And I've seen so many channels just out of nowhere for no mm-hmm. reason just. Just, they just the whole channel just nose dives and then they get like they're like why am I even gonna bother they move on to something else yeah so I wouldn't I wouldn't yolo any money until you have more money than you really know what to do with yeah. at like this point. years yeah. this is more like a three four year plan right the algorithm so far has been very kind to me I've and been I think on her good be. side I think yeah. it'll continue to be kind to you but you just you Don't never do. know yeah yeah all it takes my my opinion is it, it's the algorithm could change at any moment, mm-hmm. and uh, you got to prepare for that. So I've always prepared, like, next month is going to be the last month, and then it hopefully it's not. Right. Yeah. I think we should probably circle back to expenses. So um, back to your $40,000 a month income. So you said that you spend a lot of it on flying, but you didn't disclose that in your video. <laughs> yeah. No. By the way, yeah. I don't know if we're talking about, like, because you're talking about becoming a pilot, like mm-hmm. flying, flying, or if we're talking about traveling, flying. No. I... <laughs> Hello, everybody. I have been a recreational pilot for a long time. You can't actually take your solo test until you're 17, I believe, with parental consent. But um, I've been dabbling in it for many years. The thing is, I already had money set aside for that. So none of it came from YouTube until like just recently, just to pay mm-hmm. for some new hours I've been doing. But um, it hasn't been coming out of my recent YouTube money. I put aside 10000 many years ago. A pilot's license for personal use is about $14,000. I'm paying eight thousand eight hundred for mine. I already paid up front. Um, I just have to pay for airplane rental, which is like one hundred forty seven dollars an hour, and some fees for the FAA to make sure I'm not. Wait, what airplane is a hundred something dollars an hour? Oh, a Cessna one seventy two, a really old one, and it's, that's a lower rate because the school owns the plane, so they're it's it's kind of complicated, but it doesn't belong to the school. Someone like you just bought a Cessna, and they're renting it out to the school. But well, it's scary to drive and drive to fly an old plane. I actually trust them more because we already know the problems with it. Similar to avionics. Like, you know, I would feel safer. I mean, I'd feel a lot more comfortable on the Gulf Stream. If you have a Gulf Stream, find me around. But a Cessna, I know what's wrong with it. And there are notes that were given in a plane. Like, okay, this one has a problem with the aileron. Well, that would be a really bad problem. You don't want to do that. But uh, these things are worked on constantly. So, no. Is the 147 an hour, does that include gas or is that just like? I don't to pay for it? fuel actually. The flight school covers that. Unless they're, yeah, it's like in the cost. So 147 an hour. And then how many hours would you say you do this per session? I spend more time on the ground training, but I would do. Lately, it's been only three hours a week flying, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you're in the air for three hours, like one whole hour above Florida doing stalls, which is when you, there's a power on stall. Or a power off stall. We're basically practicing all the worst maneuvers that can possibly happen to a plane, recovering from that. Because the pilot that flew me over here, for example, from Florida, has to know what to do if the engine goes out. So that's why the expensive cost is there. It's just Wait, renting so the plane. If you stall the plane, there's someone else there. If you don't know what to do, that they'll take over for you, right? Sometimes, yes. What do you mean, sometimes? <laughs> so <laughs> we are doing solo soon. So the path to getting a personal license is you first are doing ground school where you're learning the aerodynamics of the plane, the forces of it, why it flies, how it actually flies, which is the part that's so exciting to me. How does a plane even fly? Here we Don't go. Don't get it. <laughs> it's metal and it's in the sky. Don't understand. You're getting thrust. You're getting thrust. And then because the way the wings are situated, it's naturally going to you know, lift but off. The, it's, it's a tiny little thing. Have you ever, listen, when your parents are like drive on the freeway and you stick your hand stick out your as a kid out. and you do this and your hand goes. Give me your, your hand. Do, do, this. Do. Yeah. So this is the wing, yeah. right? This 
is you get the little thing. It's called an airfoil. An airfoil is any shape that generates lift, basically. Yeah. So there's wind coming here. Okay. High pressure moves faster. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when you're flying forward, the wings are generating drag here, right. lift, and there's weight. So when the four forces are combined, and you know yeah. there might be flaps, which never are there on takeoff, but you know. It's hard to explain, yeah, but like the wind, the wind the, is going to push up against the wing yeah. and lift up the plane. I'm just surprised those, those propellers can spin fast enough. Oh, they're very I fast. Guess, I guess that's, I can take is. you in my plane. It's very fast. It's faster than you think, huh. but I'm only allowed to fly one plane, but yes, yeah, so I have an instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently in stall training, which it just, it makes me so uncomfortable because people die sometimes doing it, but I love it. If I'm going to die anyway, I mean, I have to, when I die, I want it to be in a plane. You do? Um, yeah. How so? What? Like in a, in a crash? Wait, that wait, wait, wait. I don't want to die in a plane. I just mean, if I do die, when I die, I hope it's doing something that I love. Oh, okay. Wouldn't you want to, wouldn't you want to die like, like 90 or a hundred years old, just no, like peacefully so tired of surrounded around. by like, <laughs> that's how Graham wants to die. I don't yeah, know. Like, like in your sleep. I, 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 75 is good for me. I don't know. That sounds terrible. What if me. you're like really able? At 75, like you're able to like run around and be all crazy. People That'd are young cool. at 75 now. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. I'm kind of good. <laughs> like I feel that I, my heart is so full. I'm so happy with all my hobbies. I just, I'm just really excited to just live in the moment. And I just want to do what I love forever. See, but like I love reef aquariums. I wouldn't want to die in one. I'd rather well, that just be a thing. Well, you know? probably not die in one, but maybe die like admiring one. Yeah. Or like fixing one. Kind of. I'm just saying I'm no, not scared of it. I, I, was. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's That's a, a, little, a little morbid. So how much have you spent on that? Um, 8,800 exactly. It's not bad. No. And then yeah. here's where it gets expensive. So if I just stop there, totally fine. I can just buy a little plane. They range. Their cost is very vast. An old Cessna, the little planes that you see. I'll insert a picture for you, Alex. <laughs> I'll put one mine. Um, they can be as cheap as one hundred thousand, or if they can go up to like six hundred thousand. Mm. If they're new, obviously they're more expensive. Uh, but then you have to pay for the hangar, uh, a mechanic, maybe an avionics person. So that's why most people just rent a plane. Yeah. Um, if I want to be a commercial pilot, that's what I'm kind of grappling with now. It's this is where you're gonna. This is why I didn't mention this in the video. <laughs> if I want to go and become, let's say, a Delta Airlines pilot. I'm going to have to invest at least $100,000 to earn. Get this, starting salaries, maybe not for Delta, but in general, are around $29,000. No. I always, Fact yeah, yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah, commercial pilots are, they, they make not enough money, I feel like, for, to, for the really? safety mm -hmm. of hundreds of people on an airplane. There's many reasons expensive. for it. So why does the school cost so much? Why do they make so little? Because yeah. that would assume now there are, a surplus yeah. of pilots who all want to fly planes. No one. Well, it's it's a mixture of different reasons. There's a huge dearth of pilots because a most people drop out. Their washout rate of flight school, just not even just military, I just mean like regular what I'm doing, is very high because it's a lot of studying. It's more than what people realize. And I had so many moments. That's why I've been doing it forever. I just never continued. And it's very expensive. People don't realize how expensive it is once you get past the PPL. Instrument rating is another seven thousand or so. Commercial license is about $40,000 or more because you not only have to rent the plane, you have to accumulate, oh, I should know the amount of hours off the top of my head, let's say 250 hours of flying. Do that by the amount of hours to rent the plane. It's a whole investment. It's a very rich old man's activity. And airlines just don't pay well. I forgot the exact reason for it. I heard that if you're a commercial pilot, like you can make six figures pretty mm -hmm. easily. So I know someone actually lives in my building. He's a 747 pilot. I forgot which airline. He told me, stay in there, kiddo, because it's going to be worth it. He first did, they're called, uh, I don't know the name of it, the people who fly across the beach with banners. He did that for like $30 an hour. Then he got hired at SkyWest Airlines. $30 an hour? For those banners. In Florida, they wow. usually say really bad things. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I want to tell him I can't. <laughs> I could, I could see that being like kind of fun to be like I on would a do Saturday that. afternoon, yeah. go and fly around the beach, ice coffee hour. Yeah, yeah you get public. paid for it. That's good. Yeah, I could fly your coffee. But, 30, but still, thirty an hour. I would assume a hundred an hour. Yeah. Um. So commuter planes. You can just look this up online, Alex. Too. You can see this. It's awful. Um. They start out twenty nine thousand, but that's a gross amount. That's not after taxes. That's not after the hotel stays. I mean, the airline pays for it, but 
this guy started off really bad. Then he got hired at American and got 50,000 as a, not a captain, but a first officer, which is the person who's on the other seat. They still do all the flying too. It's not like one or the other necessarily, but as a captain now for an international airline, he earns $300,000. So it's a very slow build to becoming a captain. So that's the thing that most people just drop out about. I see. So it's a lot of money to get it. Mm Mm-hmm low pay but over the long term you could make a lot of money and you're away from your family this guy's single it's just it's a Mm -hmm. very it's someone like me it's meant for me like i just know so that's why i said i didn't mention it in the video (laughs) because i was like he's gonna get mad at me i most likely want to be an airline pilot it's just the only thing i've ever dreamed of Mm -hmm. you don't want to make youtube videos for? oh i do i can do do both i can do both Both. but why but why listen so but why not just make youtube videos and travel like just why, why Why? do you need to fly the plane? Because I am dead inside, just making videos in my townhouse, waking up every day, having to please everybody and also please the algorithm and also figure out, oh, what am I going to do this week? It's not healthy for me personally to be surrounded by just social media. I have to have something else going on. Even just taking my golf lessons, which I'm so bad at, <laughs> it just makes my day and then I'm more motivated to actually make videos. And do you know how cool it would be to have a woman making videos online about, there was actually a couple people dating a life as an airline pilot. That is like binge worthy content. But, it's not relatable yeah. being like, here's my matcha tea guys. Oh, today I'm gonna go to the gym and oh, Howie and I are gonna, we're like on the rocks. Howie. <laughs> this is like a typical influencer boyfriend okay. name, I don't know. I just, I want something more from life. But why I'm, not, but why not just, you could do that as a hobby. Like, like yeah. get a cool airplane, mm-hmm. fly it around on weekends. You really want to do a career starting out at, at the 29,000, but I make your way up. like 60,000 a month with YouTube. In addition to that, they're not, they don't have to be mutually exclusive. Wouldn't that be very difficult to do both at the same time? I and and would they want you to do social media? I've seen quite a few people fired mm-hmm. from their jobs for mixing the two because they make YouTube videos. It would depend where you work, I guess, but there are so many airline social media people now. There's someone named like 74 Pilot. I talked to someone, oh, what's his name? He's really well known. There's there's a lot of people now. It's becoming normal and actually airlines yeah. kind of like it. Like I purposely tried to fly American to meet this one kid. Um, oh, I forgot his name. But anyway, he's a really young guy and he mm-hmm. became a pilot. Same thing as me. He just put in a lot of money into flying and didn't come from a whole lot. It's his passion. And like, and you're like me, you just understand. I have a passion for serving others. So for me, if YouTube were to just start paying me only 3000 a month, I would be totally fine. I just, I have such a passion for just helping other people, but not enough to be a nurse. I, I don't like blood. But, but you want to make a YOLO bet too. <laughs> do you know what, do you know what type of YOLO bet? And then we'll get back to your question, Jack. Not necessarily. Okay. When I say airline pilot, I don't mean the next two years. I mean like a seven year plan. Got it. I just plan to fly in the meantime, make as much money as I can, of course, from YouTube mm-hmm. and create other streams of income as well. The and I mean, the YOLO plan would be so that I don't have to worry. I want it to be a stream of income so that when I am an airline pilot, if I get used to my little Audi and everything, I have to be like, oh, the ghetto. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Downsize, I'm kidding. But that would be the goal. Then you'd have to move to Las Vegas. <laughs> affordable i'll be the golden nugget yeah it's nice and affordable catch me on the slot machine yeah Yeah, that should be the yolo bet is just put five thousand dollars across the slot machines yeah vlog it i've never gambled before really you've never gone wait are you serious wait that means you're good luck yeah okay so so there's there's a superstition (laughs) in vegas especially for women the first time you gamble you win and Mm -hmm. anytime you go to the craps table and like you don't know how to roll the dice. Macy did this too. I don't. You don't know how to roll the dice. You roll. It's just like number after number yeah. after number after number. You'll see all the guys around. The, just they they take out more money <laughs> out of their pockets. <laughs> it's a thing, but it's true. The superstition is, is true most of the time that people will bet on it. So if if huh. you gamble, I will I will put money on that. Okay, <laughs> we can go to my hotel. <laughs> we'll gamble. I sat at the yeah. machine. I was just like, this looks complicated. And you didn't, so you've never put money in a machine? Never. Wow. Never. I have a friend in Boston who, there's a big casino. It's so random. They have a wind casino, mm. like right in kind of outside of Cambridge. So there's like beautiful hover, then there's the wind. <laughs> and uh, people go there and gamble all the time. And he's like, I got to take you with me. Good luck. So mm. it's not my first time hearing yep. that. Mm. So if you, let's say you were in a, 
a commercial plane just traveling somewhere. Let's say something happens to the pilot. Mm -hmm. Will you be able to like swoop in and save everyone? It depends what's wrong at this basic level knowledge that I have of someone who's just put in many hours towards a PPL. I actually, I think it depends. It depends. I literally know how to like fly it and land a plane. The cockpit varies though. I have to take 10 minutes sometimes to find out where the fuel gauges are <laughs> just in my Cessna. So if let's say the engine is out, I could probably find it in my FAA regulations book, which is like this thick. There's always an answer somewhere in there. But that is actually, I want to say it's a goal. Like I'm not going to hope that a pilot like dies on a plane or anything, <laughs> but I would love to be like, yes. Yeah, does someone say pilot? Like I always find yeah. a way to insert that I'm a pilot into something. Someone's like, it's my shoes. Thanks. I'm a pilot. Like what? I'm a pilot. <laughs> like, so I think that's all of our dreams actually. I, again, I just like saving and helping people. Like Captain fix a broken boy. <laughs> hmm. But you're not broken. You're seem all right. You could fix Jack. How would you fix Jack? What about me would you fix? See, I like, I don't mean projects in a bad way. Mm. I would open his eyes to the culinary arts world. I love amazing food. I talked about Wagyu steak. Yeah. I would show him traditional Wagyu steak, like how to make it on my Komodo Joe grill. Uh, lots of travel. I just think travel opens up. I haven't even left this country, by the way. I've only gone to like Canada and Mexico. Yeah, see, same with me. Canada yeah. and Mexico. But you know what? You know what else opens up uh, your mind? Red Rock Casino. By the way, big <laughs> shout out to Red Rock Casino. They hooked it up. So uh, so maybe the podcast before this. So last week's episode, uh, we flew in my old boss, my ex-boss, mm -hmm, and I confronted him. And Red Rock hooked him up with this incredible room. So mm -hmm. we booked the room. He shows up. They're not, now, I'm not saying if you book Red Rock, they're going to do this for you. <laughs> but I just got to say, uh, we got there, and we were checking in. And they're like, oh, no, so, sorry, sir. You're at the VIP entrance. And we're like, what? And as we check in the VIP, this room overlooks the pool. And Red Rock is my favorite casino in all of Las Vegas. So my recommendation, if anyone is coming in to stay uh, in Las Vegas, go and stay at the Red Rock Casino. Nelk does a whole bunch of different videos there. They're a nice casino. They got amazing places to eat. And tell them Graham Stephan sent you. It looked really nice. It's really nice. I almost stayed there. I was telling Jack to recommend it. I guess you had yeah. booked already somewhere well, else. Yeah. I almost went with it, but then I thought, well, I now I regret it. I hate the strip. I hate the Las Vegas yeah, strip. You don't like it? It's so, well, I like it. Like when we hung out, it was fun because I had, you know, a shield to the horny men. <laughs> They're like, instead, they just look up and down. Yeah, listen, you can't walk down the strip as a, like, like a single person alone. That was last night. You can't do that. I got so, I mean, yeah. it was an ego boost because- in Boston, I didn't get any attention because yeah. all the guys are like really nerdy and they're like women. And then in Florida, <laughs> it's just like chocolate. So here I got like chocolate and <laughs> it was a mix of everything. I was yeah. like, oh, thank you. Well, this is the thing because if people travel from like around the world just to come to that one area on the strip yeah. and everyone is under the influence of something. They're going to say some And stuff. they're only in town for the weekend. So they know whatever they say or do, there's no repercussions. Mm -hmm. They're going to go home and like go back to their normal lives. But here, whatever they do, they can get away with it. Yeah. So you get just the extremes of like who people are, like what they want to do. Like a like like people on the internet, you know how they act, yeah. like behind internet a computer. Warriors. That's how people act in Vegas. It's yeah. like the equivalent to being behind a computer screen because mm -hmm. they know they're leaving like the next day yeah. and they're under the influence of something. Mm -hmm. So that's I I can't stand yeah. the strip. Red Rock is my preference. It's so, beautiful. I regret not staying there. And yeah. this is not sponsored. I actually do regret not yeah. staying there. And by the way, this is not sponsored either. They didn't tell me to say anything. This is just purely me thanking them. But yeah, in conclusion, I would take track of my little plane or literally just travel. I just love sharing my finite knowledge about the United States because I think travel makes you smarter. If not smarter, you're more open-minded. Like there are so many weird things that happen in where I live in my neighborhood and I've just gotten used to it. My next door neighbor is from Colombia, and I would never know. She told me this amazing story how she's like, guess what? I make 40,000 a year. I'm like, She's like, that's amazing. I can sponsor my family. I can like, she starts crying. I'm like, there, there. And it's just, I would never know. To me, that's not a lot of money. Because here, that's like an entry level salary. But hearing her story and how she came out from poverty and she's just like, I'm going to be your auntie. I'm going to make you like empanadas and everything. That's what travel does. Or not in case travel, but just learning other people's cultures. 
That's why it would help. And I would teach you how to do laundry. And <laughs> say what? It. What? Say it. Say it. Oh no, I wasn't thinking. Of it. Yeah. Say it. No. You gotta say oh. it. That's say it. Say it. You gotta. Is say it, it my hair? No, no. I was Is on my- totally different wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say it. You gotta say it now. If, it, if it's, bad, I was gonna we'll- corrupt you. I yeah. You can't. Just gonna corrupt corrupt wait, do it. Just <laughs> how, would, how would you corrupt Jack? Get it and, over and, with. And we'll bleep it out. If this is anything over PG-13, yeah. we're going to have <laughs> Alex voice over what you're saying in a very PG way. It'll be funny. Like, he's just so happy. He's just sitting there. He's always... Oh, he's very happy. He just looks game for anything. <laughs> you, guys, you are always very happy. Guys, the retention graph right now is insane. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's keep going. Let's, let's keep going down this, this um, rabbit hole here. I just feel like... Okay, I haven't had like that much experience, I would say. However, the few experiences I have had, because I've lived in New York with really crazy weird people, Mm. I know my type and I'm just very adventurous and weird. (laughs) And I just feel like he'd be the perfect project to turn into some like (laughs) super- Oh no. um, Like a hippie guy? No, oh no, he's so innocent. I was talking more like, like I could turn him into someone who would- Enjoy making all the decisions. But, oh <laughs> my god! I see it. Did want, you hear that? We don't want to Did corrupt. You? I like Jack the way he is. That's that's the thing. Like I, I don't want Jack to change. I don't I, either. But I, I want him to always be like this happy. I, I like the. Uh, uh, what was the word you said before? Just cheery, just cheery, easy going. Cheery. I wholesome. like. The, I like the wholesome cheeriness. Yeah. And I, I don't want to see Jack coming. Oh, hey, grab what's going on, man. <laughs> Yeah. Get on the table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get that thumbnail done. Yeah, just like you know. I'm looking at that waiter too long. No, not like that. I just mean it's funny. Like that's part. Of, that's the beauty of relationships. I think it's just getting to know other people and just trying new. Th- that's just me. I'm just very adventurous. See, I think we're the yeah. opposite because you kind of said that you have kind of like stayed in the same neighborhood for a while. Well, that's because I kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> Graham Listen, holding you hostage. I took Jack the farthest he's ever been away from Ventura. What? Yeah, Vegas. I Vegas. Been... We we went to San Francisco. Have you I've been, been one farther time? than that. Where? I've been to the farthest Barstow. I've ever been. Yeah. I went. To... <laughs> <laughs> I've been to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I was I've eleven, been to Glendale. <laughs> when I was eleven, I went to Alaska. It's rough out there. I went to Alaska. Okay. Oh, okay, so I think really I have cool. all of you beat. By the way, all of you beat. Yeah, I've been to Alaska. Distance. I've been to Costa Rica. So I've been to Alaska. Uh, uh, okay, so you've yeah. been to Alaska. Yeah. yeah, but but you get to see a different culture in Las Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. it's strip. awesome here. Yeah, yeah, the Strip. It's great. <laughs> keep going, keep going. They're listening. No, t- the retention. No, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. For retention. Yeah, he's uncomfortable. Let's keep talking about Jack. Because trust me, the retention. Psh. It's just wholesome. I like wholesome. wholesome. That was the word I was wholesome. Like, wholesome. But that's that's the specialness that I, I don't want to lose that wholesomeness. Oh, no. You wouldn't lose it. Okay. No. Let's yes. put it this way. I have dated only one person, like really long term, mm-hmm. and then two other people short term. They were all really intense, aggressive, non-easygoing, complete opposite of wholesome finance guys. So they were always like, oh, stock market. Oh, my boss. Oh. <laughs> that was really? Yeah, the New York people, like Manhattan guys. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just you're kind of <laughs> he's cracking up. I got used to it. Um, Cause so because that yeah. sounded like me up until the point where like, because I am like to me, me this AMC this morning. AMC, did you see it? Did you yeah. see GameStop? Yeah, I gotta do a video right now. Until, and they were that, they were kind of yeah. always, you know, very. I don't know. Like it turns out, those kind of people usually are the ones who need to be babied all the time. They're like totally. I don't know, mommy, mama's boys that we call them, where they need everything. I feel like it's the opposite. When someone is, you know, normal appearing at least and more independent, uh, I'm curious of what they're actually like. Is what it a facade actually like, that is you're it a just facade? chill? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I would say that the biggest thing is is Jack needs to clean his room. That Dude, was, I showed her my room. Know, what do you think of it? Now it's clean. Now it's clean. Now it's clean. What do you mean yeah. now it's clean? It's been clean for the last, since the beginning. It was fine. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was clean. There's, there's been a few times where the door's left open, <laughs> and Ramsey, Ramsey looks in there sure. and it's like that's yeah. that's his time to go in the room, and then I got to get Ramsey out. So of course, like I got to walk. That's in not there. what you said. Like, you said whenever you walk by my room, you just can't both. help. You can't help yourself but look inside. Both. That's happened. That's 
it's either one or the other. And then the you comment open. on it too. You comment on the it. The door's open. I look in. If Ramsey's there, Ramsey goes in, I'll grab the cat and I have to step around, you know, landmines. Mm-hmm. See, when I walk yeah. by your room, I don't look. I keep my eyes like, peeled <laughs> forward. Because you can't see anything. It's just a hallway. Except, well, yeah, exactly. It's true. Well, Jack, what do you want to say about it? What Do you have any uh, rebuttals to this? <laughs> any rebuttals to yeah. it? Yeah. No, I would say it's pretty accurate. I would say you pretty much depicted me like as I, as I am. I'm very easygoing. I would say that's one of my most defining characteristics. I don't really ever have a temper or anything. I just, yeah. Jack and I have the the nicest, the sweetest disagreements, the nicest things. Jack will mm-hmm. come to me after mulling something over for weeks. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, yeah. And, and I know because because sometimes he'll joke with me every now and then, like you know. And I know when he's serious. Graham, we listen. I, I we got to talk about something. You have a sack. I have. Like, oh, Jack, what is this? So I was kind of thinking. Yeah, you know, we got the, got this thing, and, and he'll just explain his go thing. around He's the like, bush. Don't want to get you know upset over this. Just th- 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 you know, this is what I'm going through. Can, can we do this? It's just the the nicest. thing. I mean, you can tell I'm like super passionate about it too, because yeah. I've been thinking over nervous. it for like yeah, nervous. Yeah. It's just like I don't want to, but, oh but uh, but yeah, every single time we've we've gotten in, in some heated discussions. A little, I would say, a little little not disagreements, but mm. uh, little tiny things. We're always able to work it out. It's 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 good. Yeah. Been nice. Very, very easy. That's good. Very Would you easy. say that you're like aware of your baggage and uh, if there's any, like what, what would you say are your flaws? Because I feel like whenever people are like, I'm easy going, I'm fine. They're usually crazy. My flaws? Or maybe not crazy, but just unaware <laughs> of. Well, okay. What do you, I mean, what do you think are my flaws? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say laundry. <laughs> I see you smiling. What is- um... <laughs> Gosh, I'd have to think about this because I want to give a real answer. Yeah. Um, God, well, it's nothing work work wise. I, I don't think there there's much that I could that I could talk about there. Um, well, Jack and I have different work ethics, so sometimes for me it's like I have this standard of just like just filling everything to brim. That's that's not Jack, so that's mm-hmm. uh, I can't I can't complain about that. Um, jeez. Uh, you have to think about it. That's good. Then. I would just say it's an experience <laughs> thing. I just, I just think the more experience you get, the more grounded you'll be. That's all. But I don't think that's really a flaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I that's don't fair. think it's a flaw. That's, yeah. that's probably it. I, I can say the flaws I think I have. Yeah. The, uh, uh, I, I definitely think there are times where I'm not very assertive. Like I'll kind of just exist, mm. and if bad things are happening, I just kind of act like they're not. And I just ah. kind of cruise. Mm-hmm. But if I have to speak up, I will. As and as Graham has seen, you know, like if it, if there's a, an issue that keeps coming up over and over and over again, and I can't take it, I'll say something. But I just don't like arguing very much. And I feel like for a lot of the times, like arguing is worse than actually just dealing with the problem. So I'll usually just deal with the problem. What if it's something like I had a best friend for a, about a year and a half, and mm-hmm. I didn't tell her from the get go that I thought she was handling certain things in a really weird way. <laughs> and turns out it was too late. I was kind of just in that friendship or, you know, it could be a relationship out of comfort. And then it just came to the point where it was just too much. And I said, look, I think you're crazy. I think you're super disrespectful to your boyfriend, everyone around you. And she's like, what? You never said this before. Why would you? I said, I don't want to be your friend anymore. So like. What was she doing? Oh, she crashed her brand new Mercedes Benz that her parents just bought her. They got her a new one. It's because she was texting and driving on the 405 freeway, hurt somebody else, didn't care about it. It's just a repeat thing. She's an only child. I'm an only child, but I was like, not like that. (laughs) I was taught the, you know, how to be respectful, I guess. I mean, it it just happens when you're in LA, rich parents kind of thing. Um, She was physically abusive to her boyfriend. She said, it's okay. He's a dude. He can take it. How, how, like, like just hitting him or (laughs) what? Role play. Red Olive Garden. Hey, I would love some breadsticks. You know what? I really don't want breadsticks right now. Do you think I'm fat? Do you think I'm fat? Is that what you're saying? You think I'm fat? No. You, that's, think, I, you think I'm fat? No, that's not what I'm saying. You, look, you looked at the waiter right now. You think she was skinnier than me, didn't you? No. no that's, just don't. What? Just don't. Oh. You, don't you put your hands on me ever again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wow. I'm like, that was, sorry. That was her. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Okay. Yeah, but it's just that her boyfriend didn't say anything and her friends were too afraid to say anything. And I wasn't either. I was like, shit, I want to get slapped across the face. <laughs> and, you know, when you let behavior like that go on for so long, I don't know. So that's my thing. I learned that. Wow. I didn't say anything to my okay. ex about things he was doing that I thought was unusual. Like he would just go around saying like slurs that I thought were really inappropriate. Okay. And then one day I was like, you know, I think that you shouldn't say that. He goes, what? No way. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't know. So that's my thing. But it's not your job to change someone. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's, that's what I've realized. It's like, you can't really change someone. If it's someone that I really, really care about that I've known for a long time, trying to go in the, like the wrong direction. Yes. So like, I'll do everything in my power to steer them like back on their path, the correct path. But if it's someone that like, like that I'm like friends with, I'll just like, I'll just not be their friend. <laughs> I'll stop <laughs> I'll just stop hanging out. Yeah, I'll just stop yeah. hanging. I'll stop texting you. That's I yeah. feel like it's, you know. I have a flaky friend like that. I just kind of downgraded her from friend to acquaintance. Yeah. We get drinks in a large group, so I don't have to expect anything out of her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'll be like, you know, get hit by a car in the middle of the street bleeding. Like, I'll just change her name. Kelsey, can you call 911? Oh, you know, I feel like Snapchat this guy first. Hold on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I just can't rely on her for anything. But I just know, okay, like, that's just who she is. So I don't like to change people. Hmm. But it'd be fun to experiment. <laughs> Just make sure Jack stays wholesome. That's stay it. wholesome. Happy and wholesome. We need yeah. those two things. If either one of those is gone, mm-hmm. I'm blaming you. I don't think after now hearing this, I don't think he'd be the type to like go into the whole Fifty Shades mode. I don't think so. Fifty Shades mode, which is I've totally fine. That. I've never seen that. Do you know what the movie's about? Uh, I know that it's it's um a very touchy uh it's very like um physical movie by the way guys anyway. we got to talk briefly and we'll yes. get back to you jack don't worry it's uh, not we, we got uh bankroll coffee you guys have always said that you want uh you want to drink the 20 cent iced coffee well guess what after a year of, of mulling things over we finally got bankroll coffee this is the new coffee it just came out the link is down below in the description i don't know if we're sold out yet yeah. We, we might be sold out by the time this post. I don't know. The link is down below in the description. Bankroll Coffee. We got a whole bunch of different flavors of coffees. We just unboxed this today. It's brand new. But uh, down below in the description. It smells really good. It was really, yeah. There we go. I love right coffee. There. I started drinking coffee as a result of YouTube mm-hmm. because I just find it hard to sit down and edit a video. So it might be time to hire an editor. Yeah, we got to talk about that. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I got you out of that situation. <laughs> so you're actually considering onboarding help? Yes, I don't know which way I want to do it exactly because I like the idea of having someone around the clock living. Like I have a huge townhouse, I might as well, but I don't like living with other people, but that will make me more money. When I have someone who's a cameraman, like in my videos, like when I did my home tour, I just light up because I feel, ah, I give the old razzle dazzle. When it's just myself, it feels like a job. It's a chore. Mm -hmm. So yes, I don't... I didn't have a good experience the first time I had an editor because it just looked like everybody else's videos. And there's a certain thing that other people can't do. It's just like that comedic timing. But I believe that I can find someone. I don't know. I've seen your videos and they do have that like personal homegrown touch to them that I feel like sometimes you lose that. Yeah. Especially with the video where you're talking about something personal. Yeah. And like of yourself. Yeah. I want to be like, guys, oh, like, my grandma died. Ping, 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 ping. Yeah, flame. Fox squad. <laughs> <laughs> Smash the like button with the little like button. Don't like, forget to subscribe. <laughs> that's the one thing I hate. It's every yeah. finance person that hires an editor yeah. always has that little thing where the little mouse scrolls over, clicks the subscribe button, then goes over to the really? notification yeah. bell. Why, why don't you like that? Because every, first of all, it seems really cheesy. It's so much better. And every single finance person has the same thing. It just, you, it, it, it immediately screams, you're paying, you know, five dollars an hour for an editor overseas to go and do this. Really? Yeah, I disagree. Yeah, I think it just looks better. It's it. There's more to Cheesy. look at when you're watching it. Cheesy. There's like movement and stuff no, like that. I like when I do it. The little <clears throat> little PNG file comes up. Little bing. I prefer that. It's so much better. I don't know if that does that actually help your channel. I think huge. I've never huge. said like or subscribe. And I think I should be saying that, but now it's too late. They're gonna be like, oh, you want me to like and subscribe? Your yes. like ratios are crazy. Yeah. Though. Yeah. You, you've had the highest like ratio I've really ever seen. I would test one video mm-hmm. and just try asking people in a really creative way, not to, mm-hmm. hey guys, hit the like button, but maybe do something like, you know what? I think that deserves a like on the video. You know what? Yeah. 
let me like my own video. And then what you should do, you could do a cool editing trick where you like, you reach over and like you press the button yourself. You're like, okay, yeah. that's better. Or like, wait a second, something's missing. Hold on. <laughs> and just hit yeah. it. Something, something like that I think would be really fun. Mm -hmm. But yes, it does make a difference. I've noticed uh, when, when I ask people to hit the like button, it'll almost double the engagement on a really? video. Yeah. So like guys, right now, make sure to hit the like button. And there's a portion of people who's like, oh, you know what? I forgot to do it. Let me just do it. It's so easy to do. Other people who think, you know what? He asked. I, I may as well just go and do it. Uh, some people rebel and they're like, you know what? Just just because he begged for it. He's begging for I'm not going to do it, which is fine. But just the mere act of mentioning mm -hmm. it. Uh, and then I've, I've tripled the amount of likes on a certain video by either offering them something. Like, I'll show you a picture of a, mm -hmm. of a baby clownfish. People love that uh, picture of an animal. Or if I do a skit. Or if I say like a challenge, if this video mm -hmm. gets 50,000 likes, I'll do something. People love that because then it feels like, okay, I'm going to be a part of this. I'm going to get them to do that. Interesting. I feel like, no, I don't feel. I read a lot of comments for some reason mm -hmm. right before my, I would guess people call it a blow up in January. I got comments like, ooh, this girl is popping up everywhere. I don't want to like this. Video. I don't want to like her, but I like her. I'm going to keep watching. I won't subscribe though. Like, what was the point of saying that? <laughs> People just didn't want to like it. And then once they came in, this girl yeah. sent me an email. I just want to say, I live in Wisconsin and like my my wife, my wife, my husband and I watch your videos and I thought that your voice was really dry, bland and annoying. <laughs> your voice? <laughs> she said your voice Gosh. is so low, deep, dry and bland. But 27 videos in, I have to say I subscribe. 27 <laughs> Like, I just responded. Like, your voice still sounds like crap, I said, thanks, crap, question but... mark. <laughs> Did you respond? Said, yeah, I said thanks question mark. Like thanks. And it was an email? Yeah. It was an email. Oh. Huh. I shut my DMs off just because it was just getting out of control sure. hectic. People are like, talk about Palestine. I'm like, Palestine. Wait, you got wait, are you talking about Instagram <laughs> DMs? <laughs> yeah. Just because, you know, when you blow up at the rate that I did, which is in such a short amount of time, people expect me to not just be a YouTuber. They want to be their friend, their therapist, but also their politician, their UN ambassador. I'm supposed to talk about every single issue everything if i don't that means i am a bigot <laughs> like mm. talk about you know the parking spots at costco i'm like oh do i have to that means you don't care about the parking spots at costco then <laughs> like well i i don't know i don't go there okay then bigot like oh That's so guys true. anyways my next video <laughs> That's true. That's I've I made a very clear distinction. I'm not going to get involved in yeah. I guess really once, anything once, controversial yeah, well, outside of finance. Yeah. No, but it, not not anything <clears throat> contra. It doesn't need to be controversial. But once you once you start taking a stance on one thing, mm -hmm. it Minimalism. becomes then. But Even you did it there. on this, but not this. So yeah. I've taken a stance that I'm going to stick just with finance. I'm not going to get involved in politics. I'm not going to. Besides Kevin, Kevin's a buddy. Mm -hmm. We got to support our friends. Yeah. But besides that, um, I just. Stay out of it. Yeah. Even like that happened with minimalism because I, when I started out, I was very hardcore. And I was also, I think, just doing it just to kind of defy someone. I don't know who it was. I think it's just because, like I said, my mom is whole opposite to me. She's very unorganized, has a lot of clothes, like super into fashion. At the time, I was very boyish and just not into it. Mm. I think I was like, look at me, I'm holier than thou. So then I realized, oh, I do like shopping. I do actually kind of like hair and makeup. So I started accumulating things when I made more money. And people came at me and said, like, oh, you have five pairs of jeans now. You said that you would never buy a pair. I'm like, well, I'm wearing capris now, Karen. Deal with it. Yeah, that was something that I, I got myself in a corner on that one because yeah. uh, I was, well, I still am really frugal, but but I was, like, frugal to an extreme. Mm -hmm. And that's what people wanted and expected. And then as soon Graham, as you're still so extremely frugal. Uh, Graham, I've, I've eased. Wait, what? That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, so so I, I said like half jokingly, but I was kind of no, serious too. No, you were too. not joking. Don't act like you were joking, Graham. You were so, passionate about it. I told Jack he doesn't need to flush the toilet uh, if it's just a number one. That is true. Yeah, I didn't do that until I saw water. it on sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I do it because I yeah, live alone. Right. I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like if it is because Jack just by himself, no one else is going in there. Just it, it could accumulate a little bit, and then you flush i mean obviously if it's something else you could flush that but it just it saves water it's good for the environment yeah absolutely. it does yeah but also i don't think my lack of flush is going to help the world but it still makes me feel good but your justification yeah. wasn't that it helps the environment your justification mainly <laughs> was that it costs more money <laughs> because who's paying the utilities and you know what i looked it up you know how much it costs per flush 
probably like 10 like cents. A, a, no, no, less than 10 cents. I'm guessing it's probably about a penny. A penny. Yeah. <laughs> One penny yeah. per flush. So yeah. that's all I'm going to say One, is Graham yeah. asked me not to flush You're after like I go TLC. <laughs> yeah. So wanna, I stopped doing that. Yeah. I, I, I'm done with that. All right. Yeah. And then what was this like a few days ago? You said that. Jack, I noticed that you're taking kind of long showers. Oh, I did. I did say that. <laughs> you like the yeah. TLC yeah. people. <laughs> like, timing the husband shower. Because, listen, there's a, there's a water there's shortage, a shortage. And we, especially in Las Vegas, we can't be taking these. Okay, but that's not your rationale. That's not your reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it in his eyes. He's trying to convince himself. There's a water shortage, Jack. We can't be taking the long showers. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to take showers on my dime. <laughs> my like knock. dime. Oh gosh, that was hilarious. Yeah, but it's admirable. I think it's a great trait to be to be frugal because mm -hmm. uh you can't control it, but like your actions, if you are frugal, they tend to actually help out because you're you're more resourceful. You're not using so many things, so yeah. that's good. You know, like Graham doesn't waste. I remember we went to Yoshinoya, and he would take I the love sauce. That place. He would take There's the sauce packets Florida. and bring them home, yeah. and then he wouldn't use them, but he would store them. <laughs> so I am a so it, I am a collector. Yeah, <laughs> the fine art. Because you never know when you're gonna need. Them. Right. When exactly. you're gonna need sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I had a whole collection of Chick Fil A sauces. Oh, everyone, yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's a staple. In you kitchen. never know when you might need one. I'm not gonna throw them because first of all, if I throw them out, then it's a guaranteed waste. But if I keep them, then at least there's a chance I'm gonna use them. It's not right. gonna be a waste. Yeah, yeah. My aunt is. I was just not watching. Super cheap in Alabama. We were in Walmart, which is the only like place to go to socialize, and she's like, Kelly, quick, go grab some of those bags. Even when you're at the checkout in Walmart, and there's plastic bags she grabbed the entire chunk of those bags their entire supply took it home so you could use them as trash bags yeah i mean i use i use oh, bags yeah, as trash bags you should but she literally took but their entire took don't you have to pay for those yeah she's like kill it quick i was like what she goes, kill it. i'm like i can't get it arrested I'll, I'll get attacked in jail like she's oh, they like, wouldn't arrest you for that though. yeah no but still she was just like we looked so sketchy and it was too late i already grabbed the bags i'm like i have to make a run for it so i've stolen one thing there were like probably 30 bags from Walmart and I, it haunts me to this day. Walmart, if you're watching. You gotta go back and replenish. Know, spend a little bit of money, Walmart, and you know, make it up for them. Yeah. How do, do you plan out your videos? Because you make them seem very effortless. Like you just flip on the camera, you have like a bit of a thing you're gonna say or like a, like an outline of what you're about to do and then you just freestyle it. I plan out some videos, the sit down videos. I will actually have a notepad and very like rudimentary system of writing out videos. Take my Muji pencil and my Muji notepad. I write the title. Like the last one I wrote is why I moved to outer space. And it was an ongoing joke on my channel that I just like hate everything and everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's just me just being frustrated again with the things I mentioned. I'm just yep. so tired of having to play a role to everybody and please everyone. So I said, you know what? Why not just move to outer space? Um, so I wrote it out. I said, it's gonna be like 20 minutes long. First, open the scene with me flying in my Cessna really far out and have it fade. I write down like fade to black and I write out open scene. Like I'm going to have a green screen. Mm. I write out the first few lines. I just think what will make people go, huh? I don't know what she's saying. I'm just going to keep watching. Like I do weird stuff in the beginning of my video sometimes. I used to bust out of my closet in my house. <laughs> So I would just surprise people by entering through weird ways that come from under the desk. So, yeah. That's cool. That does get your attention because uh, who was it? It was um, Logan Paul's editor. He has an amazing channel, but he always says the first five seconds, you got to grab their mm -hmm. attention. So I usually try to get like the first 15 for like a finance thing. Like, what's the hook here? Right. So you coming out like shocking people or doing something weird. At least it gets you thinking like, well, what's going on? Let me watch a little bit longer. Yeah. And I think that's what the lady meant in her email. She didn't mean it in a bad way. And she said, I don't want to like you. She just said, your channel is, you're so dry. Your sense of humor is dry. It's not making me want to jump up and freak out. It's just very long drawn out humor. Mm -hmm. And it might go right over your head kind of humor. <laughs> so I like that. Um, but it is more challenging if I don't act more Logan Paul like like whoa whoa. Yeah. Um, Can you act Logan Paul like for like thirty oh, seconds? Sure. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. Like you know, like I, you know, I had beef with him anyway. So like this, this fool right here. So he, he, so bro, I heard you talking about me. I just want to say I didn't really appreciate it. You know, bro. You know, huh? bro. You know, yeah. Bro? You want to go? No, we Step can take up this outside. Me, huh? You know what? <laughs> What's up? What's up? You know what? Just I just, you know what? I said what I said. I don't care that you broke your elbow. Let's take this outside. You know, bro, like, I'm just, look, I'm a defined channel, bro. Like, I really appreciate your podcast and everything. I just want to say, like, 
It's just not. <laughs> that was good. I didn't expect I can't do like his an, voice. I, ex- I expected, <laughs> yeah. honestly, like the energy. I didn't expect an actual impression. Who else can you do? I feel like you should just do impression. Can you do David Dobrik? I have to admit, I've only seen one of his videos, but I saw his, I see his apologies. So yeah. you see his apology. <laughs> wait, 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 do it, do it. Sad, okay. Cue the sad music. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey guys. Um, well, I'm sorry. I, I normally, uh, hold on. I just, okay. Um, I didn't mean to say the N word. Um, what I was actually was saying was um, nutcracker. And it just, it came right off the tongue. And you know, I, guys, like, I'm just, I'm dealing with <laughs> mental illness right now. It's not my fault. It's your guys' fault for making me so popular. And I just, you know, I just bought this house, bro. And I just, I'm so thankful for all of you. And this video is sponsored by Sea Geek. Sea <laughs> Geek. Sea Geek. Geek. And you know, just get your copy today. Um, I have a link in the description box. But anyways, I was saying, I'm not a bad person. I mean, I've made my bad decisions in the past, but you know, I just, just this video is sponsored by Grammarly. And I just want to say, I'm not racist. I'm not I'm, like, yes, I pushed a grandma down the stairs yesterday, but she was just in the way of my vibes. And I just didn't want to get in the way. You know, it's just, you just got to live your life. And yeah, I'm sorry. Hit the like That was button. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to hit the like I button. I can do a few people. Yeah. Uh, like, like who else would we it's know that you could voices, do? Though. It's yeah. Just like, the I mannerisms. Yeah. I like studied the hair flip. The hair flip was good with Logan. Yeah. Bruh. Well, yeah. There's like name people. I can probably do it. Jeffree Star. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna like attack me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is. I think he's funny. I like him. Right. Okay. Ooh, I need to walk for this one. Okay. Ooh, hi everyone. Okay, this is my new couch. I know what you're thinking. Like, didn't you just get a couch yesterday? But this is limited edition Chanel couch. Okay, I just got tired of the old couch and I just, you know, I just, I don't like Hermes anymore. The Hermes couches were really outdated. I don't know his channel very well. Yeah, I just know he's always thing, buying that, stuff. The hair thing was really good. He's always. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was really good. Yeah, I'm like. Oh. Hi sisters. <laughs> I sound like Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> Hi sisters. So today is super exciting. Here we have Maddie Ziegler from Dance Moms. How does it feel to be on Dance Moms? It feels amazing. Anyway, I'm so excited to do this video. <laughs> so we're gonna contour her face, and I just so like, what's it like um, being a dancer in LA? Oh, so funny. Oh, that so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, guys. Wow, like, I feel like we're just we have such good chemistry, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so, so. yeah, oh my god. So we're like best friends. You're all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> From what I see, he cuts people off a lot. <laughs> This is awful. That was, that was really good. We got to keep going. Who else? <laughs> Gosh, your attention, your attention is through the roof. Right? Oh my god, who else? Do you, who I just else? do a Mace. channel on impressions. Shane, Shane Doss. Oh, I've never seen a video of his. People keep all telling right. me to, that he's like. Trisha Paytas is easy, but like. Oh, dude, Trisha yeah. Paytas. Trisha Paytas. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. So like, what's up? Oh mm. my gosh, Trisha, you know you can't say that. Well, I can say whatever I want. Like, what the is your problem? <laughs> I don't understand. Mm. No, really, you can't say that. Mm, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> no, you can't. I just think you're jealous of me. And like, people tend to be jealous of me when I go into a room. They're just like feeling the energy and they're like, whoa, chill out. And I'm like, oh my God, shut up. You know, I just. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, you're also quiet. I don't understand. <laughs> you're just judging me. You're just. That was, ju- yeah, <laughs> that was really good. Who? Oh, you know what? Yeah. Nate O'Brien. Oh, oh yeah, yeah dude. Nate. This is for you leaving Nate, me on red. See Nate, Nate watches. So you yeah. Look in that camera right I there. I texted you, Nate, and you. We had a good idea. I had a video yeah. to do minimalist cocktails with him. It would have been so funny. Ugh. And he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Never text me back. Months later, called him, texted nothing. So this is for you, Nate. Okay. Look at me now. <clears throat> I'm on the show. Okay. You wish you were. You could have been a thing. This could have been yours. But no. Okay. <laughs> it'll rhyme. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? So, you know, I, I just. <laughs> <laughs> you got. You gotta finish this. <laughs> I need a hoodie. Nate, this is. <laughs> I need a hoodie. Hold Mate. on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, hey. So you know, I just. I know you guys said I'm a minimalist. Whatever. I got this couch and. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't. It's too good. Yeah, guys, I you know, I got this couch. I know you're like, whoa, you said you never spend money on a couch, but you know, it's good. I can extend myself here and I can also work here, you know? So like, oh, and then I got this truck. Hey man, could you zoom in on this? Yeah, I got this truck. And you know, it's just, yeah, I just, I feel like everything in Pennsylvania is just not really good for me. So I'm gonna move all over the map. I'm gonna go to Breckenridge, Colorado tonight. And I just, I, I you know, I, I, I just, you know, I really don't understand that. Da, 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 da. That's just him. He this just is that good. was perfect. And he the shoulders explains. too. Such, the shoulders yeah, the too. Shoulder, the, such broad shoulders. It's over explaining. Yeah. Wow. Over explaining to make you seem like you're getting content, which you are. It's a process. It's like a cycle. Oh my god, this is really. I want. I just want to keep going. I hope we're not. <laughs> I hope you don't get bored. Kevin. Kevin. Meet Kevin. O'Leary. No, meet Kevin. Meet Kevin. Why does it sound so familiar? Is he the guy that's running your yeah, friend? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't seen many of his videos. I don't know. No, I, all right, all right, yeah. all right. Now, now you try to imitate and Graham and I. I'm about laughing. He's right imitate Graham and I. Okay. Yeah. I will do Graham first. Okay. <laughs> don't look. Okay. All right. I'm going to pretend like I just bought something. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to the 59th hundred, wait, hold on, which episode is this? 60th. Hey guys, welcome to the 1000th episode of the Iced Coffee Hour podcast. My name is Graham Stephens and today, so far we made $2 million and this candle, oh, it has just been my lifesaver. This candle, oh my God, will you smell that, Jack? That's a pretty good candle, right? You know, this candle was sent to me by one of our friends on the show, Oprah Winfrey. Thank you so much, Oprah. She sent us this candle, it is handmade in, where is it, Tibet? Tibet, it's in Tibet. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Tibet, for sponsoring this video. Free Tibet, people. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not bad. But it's, it's always bad. The, it's the foot. And then Wait, Jack okay. is pretty easy. I'm, you don't talk that much in the, when you do. They're always like pretty good questions, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> so <shy. laughs> Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's the most. It's this. <laughs> what? <laughs> I watch you too. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, what? Dude. You don't do oh. much, <laughs> but when you do, it's very specific. <laughs> like what <laughs> why do you want to why do you want to shave my head i don't understand <laughs> what? That's, that's so good i can't oh my god that's all i've seen mostly <laughs> that's just all there is to chilling. it that's just that's me chilling. it's a one-liner <laughs> <laughs> one time every so what <laughs> it's always the sit and chill it's just oh. the <laughs> you can try to do me <laughs> I'm so bad at impressions. <laughs> I'm right, so really terrible. Try. Hey guys, it's Kelly. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> it's like a nerd. Hello guys, it's Kelly Stamps here. And today I'm gonna I'm the iced coffee hour a little bit. Like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go to the moon. I'm I'm gonna get my pilot's license and uh, yeah. I'm gonna be a commercial pilot sometime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's good. Oh, yeah. You're supposed okay. to the spatula. Okay, no, I'm gonna right. do the because it's just the, 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 huh? the, the inflections. Very God, distinct dude. inflection. Yeah, yeah. How do you do it? See, I'm so terrible at impressions. I could try. It's more about the body language than yeah. the voice. Okay. Because right. I'm always like that. I always yeah, use my hands. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Is it way too straight like that? Okay. All right. <laughs> Hello, it's Kelly Stamps here. Ooh, ooh. What's Kelly? <laughs> Dude, I sound like the Muffin Man. You sound like, you sound like, no. a, you sound like a parrot. <laughs> oh boy! I just know you make a lot of sounds. Oh. You make a lot of like like yeah. ad lib sounds. So thank you guys so much for watching. And one thing I want to mention that I don't mention too often in videos is that we do actually have a mentorship group down below in the description where you could meet with me every other week. And you can also talk to Jack every other week as well. We do Zoom calls. We talk for about an hour, an hour and a half. You could ask me whatever questions you want. It's a really small group, so we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. So if that's something you're interested in joining, the link is down below in the description. How about one final word for Jack? One final, final for him. Yeah, for Jack. Like either a word of encouragement or like a piece of advice or like one little tidbit we could end on. I love criticism. Yeah. You love criticism? Yeah, yeah, I do. He loves to be criticized. I love it. I need it. See, he is yeah. a I told you there's something in there. <laughs> Kidding.
<laughs> he looks uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> one piece of advice. I don't really have any. I would say he was very respectful when we met. He opened the door. Oh, my feet were hurting so much because my cowboy boots aren't really meant for walking. Right. Jessica Simpson lied. Um, that song. Boots are not made for walking. He offered his shoes. That was nice. You offered your shoes? Yeah, he's literally going to walk barefoot or try to squeeze into mine. Which probably would not work. I had, no, then what would you wear, Jack? I would. I mean, I had socks on, dude. I would have just walked my socks. Real, that's a I gentleman have, move. I have never seen somebody offer their shoes before. You know what would happen? Dude, like but she, yeah, but her, or something. No, I think her feet were hurting like, actually pretty badly though, because she brought it up a few times. And I, I would prefer just to because my feet weren't. But you have hurting. a different shoe size. But at least I would have. It would have been like some space, something to walk yeah. on. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Good. I don't I have any criticism. Jack well, I told him to do that. I would just yeah. say be open to you Massive know now that now that you no not that I mean not to but um now that you you know are not in college and you have enough money I would assume to like take a weekend trip ask Graham be like you know what Graham I want to take a day trip out to you know Idaho for example <laughs> and be like you know what Kelly Stamps um is subletting a beautiful condo there see something else other than Vegas and Ventura that's actually a great piece of advice. I just think even if it's just weekend trips, just traveling outside will open your mind to so many new things. Oh. So that's more like a suggestion for you and a comment for you saying, <laughs> <laughs> let it loose. Graham can't let go. I'll return in one piece. Urch, 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 <laughs> well, thank you. Urch, thank you for urch, that. Urch, and urch, there's no urch, other urch. criticisms, really. I don't, I can't think of, if I have to think, then that means no. Okay, there we go. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to uh, The Candle for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Oprah, Oprah for Winfrey. The Candle. Thank you so much for coming all the way to Las Vegas for this. I really oh, appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. It. In Make and out. Sure oh, you know what? You got to tell them to smash the like button. Oh, please smash the like button below this video. Thank you. Yeah, and the subscribe button and the notification bell. Feel free to get your free stock down below in the description. Worth all the way up to $70 now for a limited time. You may as well do that. It's pretty much like free money. So thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time. <laughs> 60th Hi, ever. Hi, Mom. Okay.